Hello and welcome to this video. For today, I will tell you how to use MIT App Inventor to create educational mobile games. As an introduction, MIT App Inventor is an intuitive visual programming environment that allows everyone to build fully functional apps for smartphones and tablets. It lets you develop applications for Android phones using a web browser and either a connected phone or emulator. Although it may take a while for someone to master every single component on this application, this video will briefly touch on the interface and every common and important functions available on the platform. So without further ado, let us begin with the MIT App Inventor interface. To head on to this application, it's very easy. Just type in appinventormit.edu on any web browser on your laptop. And then you will arrive at the main page, which looks like this. You can read all the information provided on this page, or you can go ahead at the very top and click on Create Apps. Once you click on that, the application will ask you to either sign in or register an account. So since I've already registered an account, I'll just go ahead and sign in with my account. After that, you will be brought to this page. So this is where all of your projects will be kept. As you can see, there is a list of the projects I've made and at the very top, there are different buttons. The projects button drop down lets you go back to this list if you're on another page or start a new project or even import different MIT projects from your own computer. The connect button lets you connect the MIT App Inventor on your browser to any different devices that you have, which is called the AI Companion. Under the build button, you can either choose to export the applications that you have already made into an APK file so that you can transfer it to different Android phones. And finally, we have the settings and help button, which you can go to if you have to report any issues or problems. The other buttons below let you either start a project, view your trash, and visit your gallery. So to begin, you can go ahead and click on start new project. Type in your project name and click on OK, and that will open an empty template for you. I'll now brief you through the interface of how to use the MIT App Inventor Studio. As you can see, there are four different columns on the screen, the palette column, viewer, components, and also properties. The palette tab is where all of your components will be for the application, such as user interface, media, layout, and so forth. The components at the bottom are a bit more advanced, so later on I'll brief you through the more common components listed at the top. To begin designing, it's very simple. You just drag whatever component you want from the user interface into the viewer tab into the phone. Whatever you've added will show up also on the component screen where you can either choose to delete or rename that component. And in the properties tab is where you customize whatever component you've chosen, such as changing its background color, any fonts, making it bold, and so forth. Now, if you've noticed at the far right, there's also a button called blocks. So this is where you code your application. Once you've already finished designing and adding in all the components you want, here is where you go to create its movement. Later on, I'll tell you more about this, and for now, we'll just head back to the designer tab. So that is basically the overview for the interface of the MIT App Inventor. You should now know all of the different columns, what they're for, and how to add in any components into your application, and how to customize them under the properties column. And if you're ever confused on what each component does, you can just go ahead on the question mark bubble under the user interface and click on that. A short guide of what each component does will appear and if you need any further information, you can just click on more information which will bring you to the component reference page. There you can read up in more detail on what each component actually does and how you can maximize its usage. Now that I've talked about the interface and the basics on how to add components and start designing your application, let's learn about some of the more common and important functions available on this platform to begin creating educational applications. On a new project page, I'll show you how to complete a simple quiz game using components that are very commonly used from the user interface. These include buttons, images, and labels, and these are some of the more widely used components on this application. Once I've added the labels and the buttons, I'll go ahead and customize the text and also the sizes of each font. You can also customize the component colors just so it's not so boring. 
I'll also add an image and make sure the size fills the parent so that it takes up the entire screen. And then you can go ahead and add another screen at the very top of the page. This opens up another blank screen that you can design for this same application. Here I'll add a label again just so people know what this page is for, and then I'll add in a table arrangement from the layout column. So these components under layout help you arrange the other different components into your phone either horizontally, vertically, or in table arrangement. I'll be using table arrangement and I'll be adding buttons into those arrangements. And as you can see, I can arrange all of my buttons side by side without any problems. After that, I'm going to head to the media components and choose sound and add that to my application. This is also one of the very important and commonly used function in MIT App Inventor and as you can see, it doesn't show up on the screen visibly. It shows up at the very bottom under non-visible components, so that means the sound component is already in the application, but it's just not visible on the screen. So I'll customize a little more in the properties tab and then go ahead and open up another screen. Here, I'll add an image and then head on to the Properties tab to choose the picture that I want as its source. Add in some more buttons and then adjust the size of the image. I'll customize buttons as a Try Again button and an Exit button. Then, I'll open up one last screen and add in a video player under the Media Components. This is an important component if you want to play any videos on your application and I'll go ahead to the properties tab so that I can choose a source of its video. I'll make the size feel apparent and then you are basically done designing your application. So once you've finished adding your components and designing your screens, what's important is to make sure those components do what you want them to do. For example, if you click on a button, then you move to screen 2 or if you click on another button, then a song will play. Only then you can see the examples of the functions of these components and how important they are in an application. So you'll have to begin all of your coding under the blocks page. To start, I'll code it that when button 1 is pressed, it will lead to opening a new screen which is screen 2, which is the first page of the quiz game. And then I'll do the same to make button 2 head on over to screen 4 whenever it is clicked. If you want to make it so that every time you click a button, a sound will play, such as a clicking sound, you can go ahead and add a sound component, add a source, and then head on over to the blocks page to add it to your button command. So now when you press button 1, you'll head on over to screen 2. On this screen, I want to make it so that the students can choose between the correct and the wrong answers. As you can see, some of the buttons are labeled as correct, and some of the buttons are labeled as just button. Here, I'll format it so that when the correct button is clicked, such as correct1 is clicked, then the label component that we added will show the text correct in green color. I'll also add a sound command that I uploaded previously so that whenever the student clicks on this button, a correct sound will play. Now to separate the correct answers from the wrong answers, I'll create an exact same command, but change it to the wrong button and have the label text be wrong and the label color be red. The song that will be played will also be a wrong buzz. Now that the commands are done, just repeat the same thing and copy paste the correct for every correct button and the wrongs for every wrong button. I'll also repeat the same code to make sure that the last button can be clicked to go onto the last screen. And here, I'll just repeat everything I did for screen 1, which is to make the different buttons lead to different screens. And then all of your hard work is over. So now your application is successfully functioning and you can use it on your phone. I'll show you now an example of how each of these components work in the application. To do that, I'll connect my phone using the AI companion under the connect tab and then scan the QR code. Now once your project shows up on your phone, you can test out how the application works and the different functions that you've already coded. And that is basically your brief introduction to MIT App Inventor, the interface, and the commonly used functions available on the application.
Thank you for watching this video and goodbye!